I will start with November 2016, question number 1C. November 2016, question number 1, cow. November 2016, question number 1, cow. I'll do two questions on business evaluation today. November 2016, question number 1, cow. Once you get that question, please put your thumbs up. Once you get that question, put your thumbs up. Frederick Wekesa, thank you very much. At least I saw your comment. And this other gentleman. I would want to see all these guys, your great people here, Felix, Jane, all these, Mr. Ward, all of them commenting on my videos. That's very important and subscribing. And subscribing. I want to improve. I want to improve. I want to improve my pension, my pension in the future. So November 2016, question number one, see, we have in this case here, students are telling me already they have gotten these. The following data was extracted from the financial statements of XYZ Limited for the year ended 30th September 2016. So I can see total assets there. I can see total liabilities, preference share capital, earnings per share, price earnings ratio, outstanding number of ordinary shares. So that they want me to give them what they are calling book value per share. They want me to give them the book value per share. They want me to give them the book value per share. So how do I get this book value per share? I know, ladies and gentlemen, that book value per share is the same as net assets value. So when they talk of book value, book value, book value per share, this is the same as what we call the net assets value per share. What I told you yesterday, we should be pronouncing as NAV, NAV. And if you can remember NAV, basically, the formula is very easy. Take the total assets, subtract any fake asset. Fake assets are intangible assets. Subtract any current liabilities, subtract non-current liabilities, and don't forget to subtract preference share capital if it is given there to arrive at this figure of net assets, net assets value. So then in this particular case, first of all, I'll have to get this NAV, the net assets value. This is what I want to get. I can see I have total assets. I have total assets of 7 million. I have total assets of 7 million. I have total liabilities, total liabilities of uh, 4 million. Of course, these ones from the definition of NERV, they will be subtracted. I can see preference share capital, preference share capital, preference share capital, preference share capital of 500,000. And this, of course, will be a deductible amount. Remember, preference share capital has been categorized as a liability. Because at the end of the day, preference share capital holders, these preference share holders, you must pay them back their money and uh, with a return, a fixed return, a fixed return. So, ladies and gentlemen, then take these 7 million, you subtract these two elements, and then you give me what, of course, I will call the net assets value. Net assets value net assets value or the book value or the book value. So they tell me to give them the book value per share. Book value per share is the same as net assets value per share. And how do we get net assets value? We take total assets minus all the liabilities, minus all the intangible assets, minus uh, in this case here, preference share capital. I'm being given there by Frederick, 2.5 million. Then I'll come and ask myself, how many ordinary shares do we have? Number of ordinary shares. Number of ordinary shares. Number of ordinary shares. November 2016. November 2016. Question number 1C. Question number 1C. So how many ordinary shares do we have? Is there somebody who is able to see the number of ordinary shares outstanding? There are 400,000. There are 400,000. 400,000. And therefore, Therefore, the net assets, the net assets value per share, per share, 
will be the 2.5 million, will be the 2.5 million. You divide this by 400,000. This one here will give us a how much here. So it means that you should be able to sell each share at how much? At that price. At that price. At that price. Which is 6.25. 6.25. So this is our share price, our market price per share now. 6.25. So are we together up to there? Have you been able to follow, ladies and gentlemen, up to there? Are we okay? Because I'm trying to connect to what I did yesterday with what I shall be doing today. So this is quite a good reminder. Quite a good reminder. I'm waiting for that gentleman who said yesterday that Mualimu, your speed is very high to respond. I hope today now we are able to resonate. Rhyme. Leonard. Ronaldo. Oh, it's Ronaldo. Okay. <laughs> but I hope now he's able to follow if he's in this class today. If he's in this class today. So great. So from there, they want me to give them the market price per share. I'm a bright student. When I see an examiner who gives me P.E. ratio, P.E. ratio, he has given me P.E. ratio, and is asking for market price per share, then that is a good examiner who is basically giving me a golden handshake. An examiner who is wishing me success. There are not many of those examiners outside here. Most examiners will always behave like uh, they are wrestling with students. They are wrestling with students. And of course, they will be the big ones. They will be the Yokozunas, Yokozunas. And then, of course, you yourself, given that you are down there still as a student, so they'll give you very heavy questions, very heavy questions that will crush you, especially if you're not studying at all. You're not studying at all. If you're not studying at all, if you're not studying at all. So in this case here, they have given me the P-E ratio. They have given me the P-E ratio. So I'm tackling number two. So when they give me the P-E ratio, then automatically it behoves on me to remember the formula. So the first thing I need to do is to remember the formula of P-E ratio. Is there somebody who can remind us? Eh? I mean, how do we compute the P-E ratio? How do we compute the P-E ratio? Somebody talked to me this morning. I'm going to give you, in this case here, a present. How do we get P-E ratio? Because I can see they've given me the P-E ratio somewhere there. They've given me the P-E ratio somewhere there. DPS, no. No, 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 no. P-E ratio, you know, this is price over earnings. This is price, basically, this is price over earnings. So you're calling it P-E. So automatically, then this will be MPS over EPS. MPS over EPS. MPS over EPS. So I'm reiterating the fact that uh, anytime they tell me to give them PE ratio, I will always be working with MPS at the numerator all over EPS at the denominator like that. And then this examiner wants me to get MPS. I told you he's a nice examiner. Make MPS the subject of the formula. Make MPS the subject of the formula. So when I make MPS the subject of the formula, then I'll come and take here PE ratio times who? Times EPS. PE ratio times EPS, times EPS, times EPS. Thank you so much. They want me, if you look at Roman 2, they want me to give them the market price per share. Unfortunately, they have given me their PE ratio there. The PE ratio given to me there is 15. Is 15. This is the PE ratio times earnings per share. I hope somebody is able to see earnings per share of 1.1 year of 1.5. I hope they're able to see that earnings per share of 1.1, I mean, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1. So is there somebody who can give me this figure pretty first? Pretty first. Bernard Otendo is giving me a figure of 16.5. Can somebody confirm? I'm sorry, I always tend to believe ladies more. I'm not saying that men should keep quiet, but I always tend to believe, you know, ladies, eh, they have some sixth sense. They have some sixth sense. 16.4 here, 16.5. Thank you so much. And I believe that eh, all of us would have gotten this answer correctly. All of us in equally. All of us in an exam, this would, one year would have been a walkover. True or false? 
<laughs> I can see here I happen to be having a student who is joining us from this advanced level. That's a language I normally tell my advanced students. You know, when I go to the advanced level there, so now I tell students that I don't trust ladies. But down here, I normally tell students that I don't trust who? I don't trust men. So things change. Things change. Thank you very much for being uh, with us in this class today. Wazeo Kumbuka. So then they want me, number three, to do something very simple. They want me to do something very simple here. They want me to give them in Roman three market value to book value ratio. Very easy. Market value to book value ratio. You know, financial management, if you get yourself failing in a paper called financial management, then straight away know that you have a problem. You have a problem because really, this is the easiest paper in CPA. This is the easiest paper in CPA. So this is market value to book value. To book value, to book value, to book value ratio. To book value ratio. So then the market value will be up all over. In this case, here, this book value or NAV. NAV per share. The NAV per share. You know, NAV per share is the same as book value. Is the same as book value. So the market price, you know, market value to book value. So it's market price on top. Market price per share. So market price per share, you guys gave me a figure of 16.5 all over the book value, which you guys had given me up there. Is there anybody who can remind me what the book value was? Or the NAV per share? The NAV per share. Is there somebody who can remind me what the NAV per share? 6.25. Thank you so much. 6.25. And then you come and do the subdivision there and they give us an answer. You give us an answer. Do the subdivision there. 2.64. 2.64, so it is 2.64, 2.64. Yes, that is the answer. But again, as a Kathleen Mova is telling us there, if you want to scare this examiner out of his skin, say 2 point, just meaning it means nothing. Say 2.64 to 1, and then you double on the line. You double on the line. You double on the line. So now, are we together? Are we together? Can Mwalimu go to another question? Can Mwalimu go to another question? Can Mwalimu now go to another question? Can Mwalimu go to another question pretty fast? Are we together? Are we together? Great. Great, great. Let's look at November 2017, question number three. November 2017, question number three. November 2017, question number three. But because I'll be posting this as different uh, videos on YouTube, I would want to cut this by requesting all of you again to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, not unless in this case here you are among those people, who don't like assisting their friends. If you like assisting your friends, just copy this link and share it with your family, share it with your friends. It's uh, all of us to succeed. It's all of us to succeed. It cannot be one person succeeding. It cannot be one person succeeding. Really. It must be all of us succeeding. So subscribe, make a comment there and share the link. Otherwise, thank you very much. Of course, if you'd want to watch the other video, just check the next link there. Great. 